How do you do? Heartbreaking events jolt us out of complacency into a new reality so that we see life differently and let go of the old way. It took several heartbreaking events to wake up the man in this story. He was known for his hand of poker until the hand of providence got hold of him, a hand that is stretched out still, and his heart and mind and life were unshackled. Speaking the truth in love, this is Unshackled, the award-winning radio drama of true life stories of real people, produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, a wise man once said, and many homeless people would agree. Though anyone can become homeless because of economic conditions, God uses afflictions to draw us to Him. Pacific Garden Mission shares that insight with the hundreds of men, women, and children who seek shelter at the old lighthouse every day. Thanks to generous friends who send financial gifts, the mission provides nourishing meals, showers, fresh clothing, and a clean, safe bunk for the night. Even medical and dental treatment is given free to resident guests in the mission clinic. Mission pastors and counselors share the good news of God's love to one and all. And those who receive this gift of new life can say, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept thy word. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is program number 3302 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. I hear you're a good poker player, Jack. I played a few hands. You can't play me like that. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just dealing cards. Oh, I told you, you can't play me like that. It's no use for me to play you. I reckon I know most tricks. I have gambled from coast to coast, and you are the only man that has caught me. Let's you and me play partners around here. Got a lot of friends around here. I won't do that. We could make a lot of money. Can't do it. Well then, I'll show you how to do that trick. The man in our story was born in Kentucky, where he raised tobacco and gambled to augment his income. This is the story of how his gambling ended. The true testimony of Jack Crow, right now on Unshackled. I was born Garnett Jackson Crow, but everyone called me Jack. I didn't smoke, but it took a fancy to gambling because it was fun and I had a good memory. So gambling became profitable. By the age of 20, my reputation preceded me. And when I asked Mary Ellen to marry me, her dad warned her saying, you know how he is. Well, after we married, I called her Molly B. In time, I opened a separate bank account for my gambling money just to keep things straight. I took care of my family with the farming income, and we were sharecrop farmers with a growing family. We always move the first week of March. You sure you don't want to ride in the sled, Molly B? No, I don't trust that mule in the snow. I'll just walk and carry the baby. I'm watching the mule. She has the horse to help pull the sled. I don't trust the horse, neither. Horse is big help to me, Molly B. A good thing I want her playing poker, huh? Reckon so. But it's bad time. The baby coming in March. The tobacco's gonna be sowed this week, so uh, we had to move. At least the boys are a big help in packing things. They're a big help in the field now, too. We're coming over the last hill, Jack. Yeah, I gotta guide the sled. Oh, look out! It's sliding! Oh, no! Come on, boys. Give me a hand. Good thing the baby and I weren't on that sled. Oh, the mirror broke. Seven years of bad luck. Grown tobacco was a cash crop, but hard work, and we used the mules to help with the hard labor, but mules can be difficult. Uh, more than once, they bolted or refused to move in order to do something. I had to show them who was boss. Our day began at four in the morning, ended after dark. 
We had five sons who helped me in the field starting when they were six years old. Then we had twins, a, a girl, Francis, and a boy, Frank. Most weekends I spent gambling in Mount Sterling. Evening, Jack. Evening, Floyd. How are those twins doing? <laughs> Growing like weeds. Glad to hear it. Do you have a game tomorrow night? At the old schoolhouse? I hear you might have company. Some boys from the Capitol? Mm, don't think we'll have room for them. Reckon we'll have to find another place. Take care of those twins now. I will, Floyd. Thanks for inquiring. The police chief who tipped us off about a raid was my friend. We played poker whenever we could in a barn, a private home, even a church basement. I tried to play with men my equal, so I didn't take advantage of them. But I knew the cards so well that I always had an advantage. When I left the farm on Saturday evening, my sons were in charge because I didn't return until Sunday morning. Molly B. never gave me a hard time about my gambling. Any sign of your pa? No, ma'am. We walked to the bus stop and waited till the bus came by, but Pop wasn't on it. Well, he's never this late on Sunday. You think something happened to him? Well, he might have come home on the early bus and cut through the fields. Well, we looked, Mom. Well, look again. He might have fell into a ditch. Pop doesn't drink. Leastways, not often. I know, but he still might have fell and hurt himself. The sun is setting. We ain't gonna see much. Oh, it's Monday, Jack. Where you been? I had the boys looking all over now, for you. Now, now, I started home yesterday. Then I went back to town to see a man that owed me some money. Well, I'll fix you something to eat. As the older boys grew, they took on more work in the field, setting the tobacco plants and pulling weeds. At harvest, they helped hang the tobacco in the barn. I even let them run the disc at plowing time. Moving every year as we did was hard on them at school. But then we rented a 52-acre farm one mile outside of Mount Sterling. The neighbors snubbed us, but we didn't care. We acquired a dog named Fairbanks that we loved. Look at Fairbanks chase them rabbits. He sure is fast. i never seen a dog catch a rabbit, but he does. And he don't even bite them. Just brings them to us so Mom can make rabbit stew. Smart dog. Yeah, sure is hot. I'm tired of hoeing tobacco. Let's go swimming in a pond. Oh, Mom told us not to. You might have a spell. I ain't going to have a spell. Listen, I don't get cooled off some. All right, let's go. Whew, this sure feels good. Glad we came, but don't tell Mom. Cody? Cody! Cody, what's wrong? Cody! Our son Cody had epileptic seizures, and he had one that day swimming. Our younger son, Osley, saved his life, but they didn't tell us about it till years later. One early morning, a loud gunshot drew us to the windows. What, what in the world? Mr. Wilson shot at Fairbanks. Oh, look at him running home. Well, at least they missed. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, he no. just fell. They didn't miss. He must be hurt bad. Yeah, that dog would keep coming if he could. But come on, let's go see. Uh, you boys be careful. No telling what that family might well, do. Are you going to say anything to no, them? No, no. Fairbanks had no right being on their property. Well, they had no call to shoot him. I don't want trouble with the neighbors. Now just see how he is. The dog was dead. A sad day for us. I didn't know it, but worse days were coming. One of the twins, who are now three years old, came down with pneumonia. Before long, our two-week-old baby daughter was also sick. You're not going into Mount Sterling, are you? Yeah, I always go on Saturday. But the kids are sick, Jack. There's nothing I can do, Molly B. Jack, please, Vivian is so little, she can barely breathe. Uh, she'll be all right, keep her warm. I stayed out all night gambling. Finally, I told the men I had a sick baby at home and left. As I was coming up the lane, my oldest son ran out to say the baby was dying. I jumped the fence and ran into the house where Molly B. handed me Vivian. The baby was dead. She had died in our son's arms while Molly B. was watching for me at the window. Our son Frank was so ill that Molly B. couldn't leave him to go to the funeral. 
Two weeks later, Frank was no better and we needed coal for heating, so I hitched the mules to the wagon. Then something told me not to go, so I unhitched them and put them back in the barn. You're not going? No. Do you think Frank is worse? Yes, he gave me his marbles this morning and told me to put them up. He wouldn't need them anymore. Oh, Jack. No, I'm going to sit with him. Our son Frank died that morning. We'd lost two children in two weeks, and not one of the men I had gambled with for years came to their funerals. You'd think I would have come to my senses, but I didn't. I kept right on gambling. Stay with us for the conclusion of Jack's story. Now, though, here's Pacific Garden Mission's president, Phil Kwiatkowski. Thanks, Timothy. One of the first languages these dramas were translated into was Spanish. And today, Unshackled, known as Desencadenados, is broadcast throughout Mexico and South America. Along with local stations, we get emails and letters telling how God is using this program to impact lives. From a province in Mexico, we recently received this email from a listener. I congratulate you for your marvelous radio program, Desencadenados. I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. We broadcast these testimonies for people like that and to encourage those who already know Christ as Savior. A prisoner in Puerto Rico writes, God ministers to me through your great program. Go to our website, unshackled.org, or click on Radio Log to learn all the places in the world you can hear Unshackled in Spanish. Or to have this program broadcast in your area in Spanish, write to Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Three years passed after the deaths of our children, and I was opening the barn door one day when a nail gouged my leg above the knee. I didn't treat it proper, and blood poisoning set in. My leg swelled up. Look at your leg, Jack. It's swelled up as big yeah, as your body. It hurts real bad, too. Well, you should see a doctor. Now, we can't afford a doctor. I'll be all right. You can die from blood poisoning. I'll just lie in bed a spell. Jack, I wish you'd listen to me. No, no, just bring me a Bible. Reckon I need to get right with the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, I am the door of the sheep. I'm the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I brought you some stew, Jack. Oh, thank you, Molly B. You've lost a lot of weight. Are the boys taking care of the mules and the farm? Oh, yes, they're good boys, Jack. I'm tired of lying here in bed. What day is it? Friday. More than two weeks. Your leg looks better. I'm going to live. Reckon I'll try getting around tomorrow. You done a heap of Bible reading. More than I have in all my life put together. That was in the spring, and in the summer, revival started at a church in town. I hadn't been to church since our babies died, but Molly B. and I went several nights. Now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Yes. Yes. How do you do that? First of all, you repent. You agree with God that you're a sinner that you can never be good enough through your own efforts, mm -hmm. only through God's grace. Mm -hmm. Galatians chapter 3 says, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Oh, yes. Believe what? Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Only the holy blood of the Son of God poured out on the cross can wash away your sins and make you good enough to receive eternal life from God. Oh. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, 
and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The convictions for my sins were heavy upon me as I listened to sermons night after night. When the evangelist moved on to a nearby town, well, we went there too. One night I surrendered and went forward to receive Christ. I knew my gambling days were over. I put my hand into the hand of God and he made me new. Pop got saved last night. No, he did too. How do you know? He ain't said nothing. What is today? Saturday. He didn't go to Mount Sterling to gamble, did he? You're right. Let's go to the kitchen and ask Mom. Mom! Mom, did Pop get saved last night? He sure did. You know, I've been thinking the tobacco is already in this year, ready to be hung, but... Next year, we're not going to plant tobacco. Well, why not, Pop? Well, because smoking tobacco is bad for people, and I don't want to be a part of it. Well, what are we going to plant? Tomatoes. Don't Tomatoes? <laughs> but the rent is based on tobacco. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Whatever you say, Jack. We're all going to church tomorrow, too. Want you kids clean and ready by nine. All right, we will be. Okay. okay life's going to be different from now on. Playing cards, dice, and my books on gambling are all in the trash. This family is going to follow the Lord. I was 40 years old when I was saved. I tried to find and repay the people I'd cheated over the years. The next year, we raised nine acres of tomatoes and had just enough money to cover expenses. But my conscience was clear before God. Then we sold everything at auction. Did you boys get the mules to Mount Sterling okay? Yeah, sure was hard to leave them. Had to be done. They weren't ours anymore. They belonged to the man that bought them. We put them in that pen and started to walk away. And they turned and looked at us. Real peculiar. Like I said, our life is not going to be the same from now on. How are we going to get to Ohio? One of my friends is coming with a truck to take us there. We moved to Middletown, Ohio, where I got a job at the paper mill and also worked at a grocery store. We found a church right away. A year later, the pastor asked me to be the Sunday school superintendent, and I prayed before accepting the position. One day, a cousin came to visit, had a deck of cards that he showed my children. I grabbed the cards and threw them in the fire. I won't have those things in my house. They're tools of the devil. You may think it's just fun, but gambling's a bondage like alcohol. First thing you know, you're cheating to win. Is it one of the Ten Commandments, Pop? Thou shalt not covet. God knows that coveting anything leads to every other sin. Thou shalt have no other gods before me is the first commandment. And the tenth is thou shalt not covet. Instead, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Our country was going through the Great Depression then, but the Lord kept me from the temptation to gamble. I began preaching in other churches around the state of Ohio. One year in the late 30s, our extended family held a reunion in Bath County, Kentucky, and I let our son, Osley, drive the car a Model T. That night, I gave my testimony for the family to hear. Our God is a God of second and third chances. He gave me more than one chance to come to him. I would go to church and listen to his word and then leave to cheat men out of their money the next weekend. But be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I came home from one of those card games and my wife handed me the lifeless body of our little two-week-old baby. I thought, I can get over this. I'm not attached to her yet. Two weeks later, our three-year-old son died also. How I grieved for them. I would walk home from gambling and weep and thought, they're not coming back. I've got to go to them. But I knew I'd face God's judgment because the Bible says, 
It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. The Holy Spirit was convicting me of my sin. God says that we're all sinners. There is none righteous. No, not one. So God sent His only begotten Son who lived a perfect life to die for our sins. All you have to do is repent. Believe that Christ died for your sins. And Jesus said in John chapter 5, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You never know when your time will come to an end. You must be ready. Jesus is waiting for you. Give him your life tonight. And after the service, we all chatted until late that night. Then we had to drive home to Ohio, an eight-hour drive. Osley was 18, so I let him drive while I slept. Molly B. talked to him all the way to keep him awake. You're not getting sleepy, are you, Osley? I'm all right, Mom. But Pop sure is sound asleep. Oh, he's tired. Working and traveling the way he does. Folks, we're excited to hear Pop tell him the truth like that. Yeah? He said some things tonight that I didn't even know. Like how close he came to getting shot a couple of times in card games. Well, I'm glad that's behind us. We're coming to a, another hill. Life is full of hills. How did you put up with the gambling all those years, Mom? Well, I kept praying that he'd change, and he did. Remember the lamb we left in Kentucky? <laughs> it was like a pet. You kids cried when we sold it. I cried when we left the mules, too. I don't know why. That mule almost got you killed when you were a baby. Funny how you get attached to animals. Yeah. You reckon God gets attached to us? Oh, sure. The Bible says we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. You sound like Pop quoting scripture. Well, God spared you when you were a baby. When the sled turned over? Yes, you were only a few days old, and that sled flipped right over the horse and mule. We both would have been killed if we'd have been on it. Who knew? God did. He kept me from riding on it. How come God didn't keep Frank and Vivian from dying? Well, his ways are not our ways, son. He used their death to bring your daddy to godly convictions. By the mid-40s, Pop was getting requests from churches in other states to hold meetings. He would be gone weeks at a time, but he always rode home. I married, but still lived in Middletown, Ohio. And I helped Mom while Dad was gone. He sent some money. Where is Pop now? In Chandler, Oklahoma. I never thought he'd go so far away, telling people about Jesus. Oh, God made radical changes in him. What does Pop say? That he has a good place to stay right over the church. He's well and has plenty to eat. They let him use a loudspeaker on the courthouse steps. When's he coming home? They're still having revivals. So, not for another week. And then he has meetings in Union City, Indiana. My pop the evangelist. Who would have thought? He keeps saying, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Pop traveled to Michigan, Virginia, and all over Ohio and Kentucky, preaching the gospel wherever he was invited. In 1949... Pop was invited to Cape Girardeau, Missouri, for revival meetings. He had been there ten days when a nasty storm swept through the area. Brother Crow, quick! Oh, what, what's the matter? We got to get to the storm cellar. A tornado is nearby. I'll be right there. Hello? Osley? Mom, what is it? I, I just got a call. It's Pop, isn't it? Uh, he's gone. Osley, your dad is gone. What happened? They had a tornado. 
and the house he was staying in was demolished. I heard about that tornado on the news. Pop was there. Eight people were killed. He didn't get to the cellar in time. I can't believe it. Oh, what am I going to do without him? I'll be right there, Mom. A local funeral director flew to Missouri and brought my pop back to Middletown for the funeral. I had worked with my father throughout my life and talked with him man to man. I've never known anyone that lived for God any better than my pop did after he was saved. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Would you like to have new life, listening friend? God promises in Ezekiel chapter 36, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. You can do that now by praying with us. Dear God, I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead and lives to save me now. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for the gift of eternal life in him. Come into my life, Lord Jesus, and make me new. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us know you prayed, and we'll send you some literature to help you in your spiritual endeavor. The address is Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. The telephone number in Chicago, 312-492-9410. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry, www.unshackled.org. A listener in Puerto Rico writes, I love Unshackled because the stories are real. Well, we agree and hope you ask the manager of this station to keep broadcasting unshackled. This is program number 3302, heard in the true story of Jack Crow were David Brian Stewart, Joanne Silvestrek, Brandon Ryder, Peter Curran, and Dale Roberts. Original music, Ralph Colburn. Sound, Nadine Aloysio Sorensen. Engineer Kim Rasmussen, script Kenitha Gabler, and I'm Timothy Gregory. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today. Your letter means a great deal to us. The address, Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. You may call Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago and talk with someone who cares. 312-492-9410. Someone is waiting for your call. 312-492-9410.